Alright, how's it going y'all? Today I have the new M1 iPad Pro in front of me here, and it has a very special thing now that there's this new M1 chip in here, and that is it's actually got a Thunderbolt 3 port on it right here. And so the reason this is so interesting is Thunderbolt 3 allows you to have insane peripherals and really start turning this into something that looks and acts like a laptop and can actually do professional workflows. And so with it, I've got this 10 gigabit to Thunderbolt 3 adapter, and we're gonna test out and see honestly, how fast is this network capability and can the iPad actually run a Thunderbolt 3 device like this 10 gig card? And so with this upgraded port, this Thunderbolt 3 port, the iPad has a huge hardware unlock that could put it in a lot of actually pro workflows. For me, I use 10 gigabit storage for everything. All my storage is on network attached servers. And so basically I just use network connectivity to handle all my massive files. And with that, you need really fast ports. And so by opening up to this 10 gigabit connectivity with an iPad Pro, you can start having workflows that might involve that. The software still has to catch up, but there unlocks a ton of new operations that you can do that actually could turn this into a real workhorse somewhere down the line. All right, so the first thing I wanna go ahead and do is first just see what happens when we hook up this 10 gigabit to Thunderbolt 3 adapter to our iPad. So I have this network cable going into my 10 gig switch and we're just gonna plug it in. So we go into settings. We should see right here, this ethernet option has popped up. It's not normally there, but since I've got an ethernet adapter in here and it's just plug and play. One thing, you open it up and you don't have really any optimization things. Specifically, I was looking for jumbo frames in here. You cannot enable jumbo frames on this device. By the way, this is the OWC Thunderbolt 3 adapter. I'll go ahead and leave an Amazon affiliate link to this in the description below. And this is exactly what it is. And so it automatically found it. There was nothing we need to do here. And so now we are over a wired 10 gigabit connection. The light say, yep, we are full 10 gig. And so now let's go ahead and do a couple of tests to see what we can do. And the first one I'm gonna go ahead and do is an iPerf3 test. And so what I've done is I'm running an iPerf3 server on my FreeNAS build. And right now I'm connected to it right now. And so we're just gonna go ahead and hit start. And so yeah, we are actually getting 10 gigabit speeds out of this thing. 9.4, 9.3 gigabit per second is what I would expect to get out of a normal 10 gig connection, just because you're not perfect, there's frame losses, everything like that. So that is really fast. We had a minimum of 9.2 gigabit per second with this connection. That was the upload speed. Let's try the download speed. By the way, this is only 128 gigs of storage, and so it only has eight gigs of RAM rather than the 16 on the larger storage sizes. And so now we're testing the download speed. And so you can see right here, we are getting much worse download speeds. I mean, they're nothing to cough at, but they're not nearly as consistent for one, and two, they also are much lower. So full disclosure, I just found this iPerf3 app on the App Store. There's not a lot of great ways to test it. This could be possibly the actual iPerf software being slow, but it's showing that our download speeds are a lot slower than our upload speeds. So there's that, take that with a grain of salt. It averaged at 5.3 gigabit, which is probably faster than anything you're working with on an iPad anyway, but there was that huge fluctuation all the way down to 3.3 gigabit, which once again, is probably faster than anything else you're doing on your iPad. All right, and so that's the iPerf test, which, I mean, it tells you how well the adapter works, but it really doesn't tell you anything real. Because to see anything real, you've gotta see how it performs with a workflow. Now let's just go with the most common workflow, why you would need a 10 gigabit adapter with this thing, and that is to go through, and I'm going to hook this thing up to my FreeNAS server, and we're going to see how fast we can download, then upload the same file using Apple's file app. So to do that, we're just gonna go into the app, the files, and we're just going to go into shared and servers. So if you've not done this already, just go in to right here and click connect to server. And honestly, it just allows you to connect to an SMB server really easily. All 
All right, and so I've got this 21.98 gigabyte file, and there's not a great way to test exactly how much throughput we're getting, so I'm just gonna use a timer. So to copy it over, I'm gonna hit copy, and I'm gonna hit move, and I'm gonna put it in this test folder that's directly on my iPad, and I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer. All right, so we're gonna hit copy in three, two, one, start. All right, so right here from the, at least the FreeNAS dashboard that I'm looking at over here, it looks like we're getting 200 megabytes per second, which is absolutely nothing to scoff at, especially because we've not enabled jumbo frames on this thing, but it's not that fast. So we're at the 30 second mark. And so in theory, this should take us roughly 100 seconds. Once again, there's also no way to really tell what's going on behind the scenes here. There's no progress bar, which I do wish they had. I mean, I get that they don't because originally this was written where you would never do something like this, but that's something I really hope they add in because I think it would make it a lot more useful. If you are going to be able to start using NAS like this, you really want to be able to see what's going on, being able to tell, hey, how fast is it actually going? Is it stalled? Has the transfer failed? Is it going at one megabyte per second? Is it going at 200 megabytes per second? There's no progress bar indicator whatsoever. So another thing you'll see up here, the power is draining incredibly quickly. Luckily with this keyboard, which is not cheap, there is actually a USB-C port for power on the left-hand side here. So I could actually power this while I'm doing it because these 10 gig adapters are very power hungry and can actually overheat, but it is supplying enough current to it. Okay. So that finished, I probably hit cancel a little bit late, but that finished at a minute and 50 seconds, let's say. So that is about 100 seconds. So that's 200 megabytes per second, which is actually nothing to scoff at for a setup like this without jumbo frames on and zero optimization. I mean, that's actually pretty usable considering how you're able to do this with network storage. Now. This only has 128 gig hard drive in it, so it doesn't really matter. I, I would fill that thing up in just under five minutes. All right, and so now for part two of this test, let's go ahead and see what happens when we copy that same file back to the server. And so now I'm going to put it on that again, edit, and we'll just copy it to card dump. And we're going to go in three, two, one. Now let's see how long this one takes. All right, and so from looking over there, and it's on the screen here, it looks like we're running at about 190 megabytes per second upload speed out of this thing, which honestly, I mean, it's not super fast for a 10 gig, but it actually is a lot faster than what you would get out of pretty much anything else. Probably gonna to wanna to go through and actually do a copy test with an actual hard drive hooked up to this at one point and really see what kind of throughput it has. But for this 10 gig connection, I mean, the connection seems to be stable. The thing's actually quite warm, which is normal for it. But yeah, so this is actually working pretty well for what I expected. I do wish they had a little network indicator that said, hey, this is how fast you're going, this is how far we've made it through the file. But if you actually have a workflow for this and need to be able to transfer massive files around, Files is actually working now. Previously, you couldn't even connect to an SMB share. Now, you're connecting and it's actually, it works and it's able to support 200 megabytes per second, which is nothing to scoff at. All right. And so this one completed at 157 seconds. So let's go through and just do the actual math about how much that actually transferred. So we've got 21 point Eight, nine, we'll do this in megabytes per second, divided by 60 plus 50 is 110. So for the actual download speed, we were getting 199 megabytes per second download. And then for the upload speed, it's not much different. We were averaging 187 megabytes per second upload. So that actually is pretty good. It could be a lot worse. It's not the gigabyte per second I've been able to get with my Mac, but it is actually moving. And this is actually writing directly to the hard drive. I didn't find any good storage apps that I could test with. 
So these are the real world parameters you'd see. This is not having just a random write test to it where it pretty much doesn't have to actually grab files out of RAM. Instead, it's actually got to go through, grab the files from the actual hard drive and give it to the network controller. So it actually does work. So if you have a workflow for this, and I would love to know in the comments below what kind of workflow you could possibly use with this, this will work for you. And you'll get about 200 megabytes per second read and write, which is actually a lot better than I expected. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Go and leave any other tutorials you like seeing me make with the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.